Hello, welcome to my channel. Let's do a reading. Why not? Just coming out of uh, 888, but this portal is still doing its thing. Five of Swords, overall energy. I think that uh, there is a collapse. There's a collapse of um, patriarchal war, fighting, illusion. There's a diff there's like um, yeah. There's not going to be any more fighting. Or <laughs> there's a lot of fighting right now. There's a divide of the mind and in the midst of it, looking ahead, looking ahead away from this energy. I think that the, with this magician here, I think we're done with manifesting things via war, via um, trickery. This is the Seven of Swords. This is like a trickster energy. This is someone who fools and, and puts mirrors and masks in order to get what they need in the war, in the fight, so that they can win the argument, so they can win the anything. It's, it's divisive. It's divisiveness. And we're trying to like kind of move beyond that. I'm going to put that card back. Seven, five, one. I mean, this is a lot of energy right now, like this five of swords. This is a surrender to even trying to manifest for the benefit of the mind and the ego. The mind is doing a lot of traveling. The mind is doing a lot of visiting um, past scenarios. Um, I feel like as... There's a collapse and a surrender to trying to get what you want or seeing other people in your life that have kind of tricked and manipulated you to get what they wanted from you. So energy siphoning, also areas where you have done that. I feel like there's memories surfacing of where that's happened to you. And this is for the collective, definitely. This is collective energy where this has happened to you and where... Um, you've done this to others where you've seen that pattern be taught to you by your parents or other people and then you see yourself doing it either to your kids or to your friends or to colleagues or whatever it's it's a surrender of the trickster energy it's a surrender of I mean, it's one thing like the seven of swords it's it's one thing if you're kind of laying low and if you, let's say you are a person of power, but there's no need to show it off, right? I mean, you can if you want, but there's just no need. There's no egoic need to be like, hey, I am so uh, really gifted at this and that. You know, you just already are. So you can present yourself as humble and it could kind of trick people in kind of a cute way. Like I can see this card being cute, but it doesn't feel cute um, energetically right now. This is a, This is a dissolving of being tricked yourself, tricking yourself and getting what you want. You don't really, you, you, you become a part of the service to self hamster wheel that never ends because you can never satisfy the self in that direction, right? So you learn how to manifest, you learn about magic, but you're doing it for the wrong, I guess I shouldn't say wrong reasons, but service to self reasons. And then this this kind of continues of kind of traveling and in, in the mind, traveling in the astral realm, in the, in the realm of duality, seeing the ups and downs, and seeing where you've been in that energy throughout your life. And even now, it, 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 I almost feel like this energy is coming up in the collective to have that experience and then see it connect throughout the life, throughout the lifetime. If you're aware enough, you know, if you're aware enough, for those who are aware, who can see.
This is a very interesting placement for the King of Wands. Staring at the Knight of Swords in the first place. There's some sort of stability in acknowledging what you want or the collective acknowledging what they want in the realm of security, in the realm of possessions, in the realm of, of desires, but also seeing where that has led you and why you want what you want, but not denying it. So the healing, there's, there's the healing in, how do I say this? There's a healing in wanting, acknowledging what you want because it's in you or the collective, right? This could be a collective thing, like acknowledging what you want, even if it is service to self. So there might be guilt and shame that comes up in that for some. But also oh, be, being aware of where that has gotten you throughout your life or other people that, that this desire has gotten you on a hamster wheel of a desire that never ceases, right? But to deny the desire gets stuck, can, can be stuck in the shadow aspect of yourself and then it will persist because it's not being acknowledged. So I'm seeing that desires are being acknowledged and then you're traveling in the realms of, of, of the experience. How do I explain that? Of those desires. I don't know how to explain it. The world. There's a lot of travel energy. A lot of change going on. In how we communicate with each other. And there is like. There's a cycle closing when it comes to division. Fragmentation. There's a, there's a wholeness and awareness of who we are even if it's even if it's the negative aspects of us collectively and individually home just doesn't home has been uh doesn't feel stable at the same time it's worth standing in your place in your true place um, I think also there's a traveling and a remembering of home life, the struggle of home life, your parents' struggle, your struggle, your kids' struggle, and just never really feeling secure in, in feminine energy, maybe even insecurity in dark feminine energy, because this is really reminding me of Acknowledging strong desire in a mature way. And so this is like that beat up energy of desiring a happy home life, desiring stability. But in that wounding becomes the power. What is that nine? Yeah, in that wounding becomes the teaching, becomes the truth. It alchemizes into truth. So there's a lot of healing with the fifth house, the house of Leo. The eight eights, the eighth house, which is really interesting. I'm going along the houses here. One, two, three, four, five. So we're in the house of Leo. There's a lot of healing of inner child wounds and, and healing of suppressed creativity, I want to say. Healing of family life, because four acknowledges the fourth house. So the healing of the wounded like child in, in the family, the wounded inner child in the family, or the lack of home, or the struggle of the home life, the upbringing. So like a lot of balance, a lot of healing. Um, a healing of in inability to express oneself. Um an ability to focus on creation, the creative abilities. We got the sixth house. Hmm. 
So that's acknowledging the eighth. Okay. I feel like there is still, how does this get explained? There's not, there, there has, there's a lack of unification or awareness or acknowledgement of how this transformation, this metamorphosis is healthy and is healing us. So um, there's a struggle in this process to serve oneself in, in one's own healing. Um, there's a lot of mental activity going on and desire and change. Um, like sometimes the mind or we're in a place collectively or individually where we know the things to do to start to heal or how we can serve our fellows in, in, in healing. But the service to self, I mean, energy is getting transmuted. So the service to others is just, it's not, it's not a focus right now. It's, it's like, um, the focus is on like, how, how can I be of service when I've denied my shadow aspect of what I want or the areas in which I only want to serve myself or the areas in my family line in which there only wants to be service to self or in the areas of the collective. So now what? I'm seeing the shadow, but there's not like the clarity of how to heal it. And so the veil, it used, there's still a swimming in the veil or in the shadow of that energy. That's the best way I can put it right now. So it's not, um, there's not this, it's the mystery of surrender. The healing is in the mystery of surrender to collapse the veils and to dive into the unknown and almost acknowledge the crazy thinking, but with as much awareness as possible. But the awareness of how to do this is very vague. So I think we're in the learn learning of surrender, this trickster energy, this, this, yeah, it's the service to self energy really is what I'm getting. Let's see. Any kind of heaviness in relationships are, are um, really like, like the karmic relationships or the relationships or the, I should even just say how we mirror each other. So the people in our lives, there's a lot of heaviness that we're seeing them go through. And it might be uh, if we're in a state of negativity or lower frequency or stuck in this kind of veil in this time period, which a lot of people might be going through that right now for good, you know, I think for purpose. Um, you're going to see struggle with other, you know, in other people's, like other pe people struggling in their lives right now, but you're also going to be struggling with people because if you're in those lower energies, you guys will be reflecting back and forth this trickster energy. So the people in front of you might be tricking you or they're tricking themselves or fooling themselves or serving themselves and not realizing it. This is an energy of, oh no, I'm helping lots of people, but then really not really knowing what that is and starting to see that they've been helping themselves all along. That's you, um, aspects of you or the collective, those around you. I don't know, this is really intense, but it is coming to a close. Like it's not gonna persist with the people around you. Okay, where the stability is right now, where the money is, where the truth is, where the new earth is, whatever. Eighth house, ego death. The collapse of the veil. It's almost like this unknown energy is the stability, is the anchor, is the wealth, is the prosperity. Like letting it go. What number is this? six so some of you don't know how to heal um well there, there's true a lot of truth coming up in relationship even an inner union between your masculine and feminine energies because this to me is a collapse of distorted aggressive 
masculine energy. There's dark mother energy here too, though, and a pain in that um, from the, this looks like dark feminine energy as well. And the acknowledgement of that. Where the dark feminine's looking for um, security and finding someone. Hmm. Leaning on, how do I say that without sounding like <laughs> women can't take care of themselves without men? Because that's not what I'm trying to say at all. I'm just going back in like past times where women needed to lean on the security of men in the society in order to survive. So that's kind of what I'm getting. And so they will manipulate and do what they need to do to survive. So they're again, service to self, but you know, survival fear-based mechanisms. It's no one's fault. It's just a pattern. Um, there's a lot of clarity and truth coming up in relationships. There's also kind of a funny veil going on though, when it comes to how to heal the relationship. But it is that transformative energy of diving into the unknown. <laughs> That's where the money is. Um, looking to the unknown, looking to the inner truth, looking towards your heart space is what will guide you um, and bring you to your truth. So allow your lover or the relationships in your life. They're going to either reflect you looking at this pattern and showing you how you've been in this pattern, the seven of swords, the trickster energy, or that how that's been done to you. Or you just look for the unknown, look towards God and allow and create with God a new song, so to speak and allow the reflection to follow suit. So don't basically, don't try to change what can't be changed. What if these aspects have been in you, they need to be seen. They can't be fixed or changed. They need to be accepted. And then you create a new in the midst of this energy and allow the world to shift and change through that, through that truth. This to me is the collapse of the patriarchy. That's the collapse of the like distorted mas masculine energy. It's the collapse of the trickster energy. It's the collapse of the corporation mindset. The collapse of the sociopath. The collapse of service to self. Um, even the collapse of like just the kind of mechanical machine ways of running matrix you know it's just, just okay we got this uh death card now after the after the tower card we got the death card so after the collapse then there's going to be a total wow i'm just looking into the portal energies and it looks like just collapse of patriarchy uh collapse of definitely trickster energy collapse of service to self energies like those energies aren't able to be hidden anymore because there's a strong acknowledgement of even our own personal desires in the house of material possessions and wealth and security. So this is a house that kind of can, it's, it's nice, it can be a house of luxury and stuff, but a lot of times it's our possessions. It's the stuff that anchors us into um, fear a lot. And there just seems to be a collapse of that. Um, Five, 10, 13, 15, 16. Wow. And the well of love remains in the unknown. This is also the 12th house. This could be the house, like this is the house of the ancestors. This is the house of the family line. It's like the love is pouring in. It's the destruction of this energy and like love is pouring in from the ancestors to help transmute this. Energy. So let's see, any advice for anybody who's watching this? I don't post that often, so it's gonna be like, probably not a lot of people, so it might be geared if you're watching this. 
and you've gotten this far, this could be specifically your message. So let's go. Page of Wands. Okay, so there's a lot of, as this transmutes, as you lean in and tap into the unknown, allow this monomorphosis to happen, it's happening. For whoever's watching, it's happening, it's a collapse. Allowing this new beginning, this love to overflow from the ancestors, from the unknown. And there's gonna be lots of pangs of inspiration and fast movement, communication, moving, traveling, downloads, a knowing. Yeah, some of you might be teaching. You guys might get downloads and start to teach these truths that come through. And, you, and, and the things that are naturally blissful to you, the things that are more, this is a soulmate. This is a soulmate card. This is also like childlike innocence. This is like getting back to your soul. This is very harmonious. This is very childlike. And so through you might really enjoy teaching, speaking truth getting downloads and speaking truth, but also you're moving back into your soul's energy and letting go of old patterns. I feel like during this, wow, this looks really pretty. Is it showing up on the thing? That's pretty cool. I feel like during this time, if you will grieve these old energies, maybe even feel guilt and shame for the times that you either fell victim to these energies or where you were the perpetrator or where you did things selfishly like oh my god we all have right even just a kid like you know not sharing a toy right it's like no need for guilt and shame we could look at our desires and just acknowledge them and work through this guilt and shame meaning just feel it but don't let the pattern make you loop in it because that's what you're leaving that pattern that loop of you, know, you should feel guilty because of this. You need to do this to change. Da, 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 da. It's all service to a, a self. It's all service to the mind. Just seeing the pattern of the mind and how it produces the guilt and shame. I mean, you need enough of it to look at it so that you can grow and expand. Move back into your childlike innocence and freedom. So that's it. That's my uh, reading. I thought I would just look in the energies and post a video if you'd like a personal um reading just um i don't even think i'm gonna put my information in the description box but it's like on all my other videos and i have a little um service um for personal readings and uh you can sign up for one if you'd like and um with that sending you much love take care